Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide and this time we are getting it all in the awesome Lifeless Moon. Yes, if you remember the excellent Lifeless Planet game, this kind of acts as a sort of prequel to that. Uh, but this was developed by Stage 2 Studios, published by Serenity Forge and is usually available for uh, £10.74 or $12.99 in the old USA, the old MAGA country, as it were. Uh, but let's not get into that right now. So, like I said, this is basically the spiritual successor, as it turns out, to Lifeless Planet. It's a 3D platformer, where basically, and it's kind of a platformer, more or less walking simulator, uh, where we have to, well, you know, explore the moon and stuff. But it is, uh, it is truly a really cool, very cool looking game. Um, as for achievements, now, there is chapter selected at the end of the game if you do miss anything, but there's just a few miscellaneous sort of things that we have to look out for. I uh, have to do a tiny little bit of searching, just going off the beaten track ever so slightly. Um, but the achievements are genuinely rather easy, so nothing to worry about there. All in all, you're looking at around poof, easy one and a half to two hours, if that, to get this done. So, with that being said then, let, 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 let's go. Do it! And just to let you know, there will be an unskippable like two minute cutscene or so at the very beginning of the game, which I've decided to take out of the video because, you know, you're already watching it on your screen, so you don't need to watch it on my screen as well. Uh, so yes, anything dialogue-y and anything uh, cutscene-y is unskippable, but that's fine. So what we'll do then, all we're going to do is just continue heading forward. Now, obviously, as I said, it's a platformer, but it is mainly a walking simulator as well. So a lot of the time you will just be walking forward, walking here, walking there, walking bloody everywhere. So you can have a look at your notebook if you wish with the B button. The Y inventory pops, uh, the Y button pops your inventory out. So for now, continue walking forward until you hear uh, what sounds like, well, most people's butts after a uh, long night out. Boom! Poor toilet. Poor, poor toilet. That's kebab and booze country, that. Uh, so from here, then, we're going to take a little left, just as we get to our broski guy right there, or whatever he's supposed to be. Kind of a little bit dark, uh, but, you know, you'll see. You've got eyes, you'll be able to see. But basically, what kind of looks like the mushroom planet there from uh, the first, uh, the end of the first Sonic film, we need to go past them, sort of climb up these rocks... And that should then be able to get us up on top of said mushrooms. I say mushrooms, it kind of looks like... It does kind of look, uh, you know, Jim Carrey, Dr. Eggman, uh, <laughs> Mushroom Planet from the end of Sonic 1, beginning of Sonic 2. L very much looking forward to Sonic 3. So anyway, just continue following the path up and down for now. And then we're going to get our first achievement in just a few seconds. So, sometimes through this game you will see those buttons on the floor, which will give us the ability to walk forward very, very quickly. But before going all the way through, head to the left, just into this little gap right here. And this is where we're going to get our first achievement for Moon Rocks. Now, if you do ever manage to get home, then, you know, Moon Rocks must cost a couple of quid, right? So I'd put a few in your pocket. Surely astronauts have got, astronauts have got pockets, right? Although they get held down. Nah, anyway... Continue moving on your way through the only path that we really can at the moment after you've grabbed that achievement. Hey, I think I see something up ahead. And somehow, someone put a big, bloody floating city on this moon. I like it. No people about. It's, uh, yeah, pretty cute. Right, so what we'll do is we'll head into this little city, continue going straight past the Florence's Diner. And when we go straight enough, we're going to see a yellow wire on the floor that we're just going to follow around to the right. Thank you. 
Ooh, underground labby. Very fallouty this one, isn't it? Anyway, head down the ladder and we're going to get our second achievement called Underground for discovering the underground lab. Incredibly. Right, so once we've done here then, a few things to do. Obviously, that's what we do in most video games, is do things. Uh, but continue heading forward. Dr. Emily Watson, research scientist at the Muro Centre. On Monday... And once we get up to the top of the stairs here, we can press the X button once to interact with the valve. And then we're going to head back down the stairs. And then straight in front of us over to the right will be the generator, which we will also press the X button with to interact with as well. And yes, incredibly, that just grabs the ladder down, which, I mean, it seems very awkward in order to just get a ladder down to the ground, but, you know, I wasn't born on the moon. Neither were a lot of us, I suppose. So, past the steps on the right, uh, heading up the ladder to get back outside. You can do a couple of little jumps if you want to skedaddle your ass up a little bit quicker. You know, only ever so slightly, though. And then we can just turn around and here we are back on the outside. So again, follow the yellow wire around back to the left so we can get back into the city. And then just next to Florence's Diner. You know what? I've always, always wanted to try like one of those sort of American... I'm going to have to come to America soon. And then, hey, maybe we can all meet up and have a Florence's Diner and have some pure American drinks and stuff. Yeah, but I've always wanted to try one. Anyway, here is the ladder. So, we're just going to do a little bit of climbing up. Now, when we collect things in the game, the only way and the only indicator that you know that you've collected something is when the inventory button uh, button prompt pops up at the bottom left-hand corner. Um, again, if you press the white button, you can have a check if you so wish, but that is when you generally know that there's no um, prompt for you to pick it up. You will automatically just uh, collect it, and again, like I said, as soon as you know you picked something up, when it tells you uh, when it just says inventory there at the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, so we can't actually unclimb our way down, unclimb our way up. Anyway, I meant you can't go down as quick as you can climb up for whatever reason. So just head down the ladders once more. And when we get down to the bottom, head slightly left, and there's going to be a door which we can automatically go through on this building right here. Yeah. Kind of looks like a, I don't know, kind of looks like a back alleyway, you know, one of those clubs or something that's like what's your password and then you get in and then it's literally just a normal bar so what's with all the secret stuff huh and then it turns out that it's like an underground you know prosy ring or something i don't know anyway uh, we can't all we can do is simply walk to the right past the floating deathly ghost chair and then to the cage or whatever that is uh the basketball hoop and then eventually we'll be able to collect an item there it is which will just be the second key so now we can get out of here Seems like only the research scientists survived the teleportation event. Alright, I hate to say it's all making sense, but this has got to be related to that huge explosion out in the desert a couple years ago. They thought an experiment at the research center destroyed half the town and killed a bunch of people, remember? They never found anything except a huge crater in the ground. Right, let's go get some of that delicious diner food. You know, the coffee and pie. Every time I see something on American TV and it says, do you want a coffee and some pear? I don't like coffee, but I do like a pie. Uh, anyway, so we're heading here then. So let's get into Florence's Diner. Now, we can't actually move around in this area in terms of our actual space body, but we can interact with things. You can see the marker on screen. Once the marker on screen goes green, as you can see, as we look at the uh, cork board right here, that means you can pick something up. So pick up the flying airplane picture. 
or the plain picture of life and then we can just uh, turn to the right interact with the till reception -y, I forget what it's called area but this bit uh, you can interact with the diner we're gonna have to interact with it anyway so when once we press the B button to put it back down if you then take a look over to the left you can see a random floating bra which is just a ghost of your dead pilot which is very creepy especially with the voice now commander you should never have let me fly that day you knew I wasn't ready Yo, whoops, did I tell you you could fly? <laughs> Sorry, that's that's my bad, bro. Sorry about the death and everything. Anyway, once you have picked up the key, you can then go ahead and turn around E and exit your dinery. And we didn't even get that pie and coffee Eve. Donald Trump style coffee Eve. Okay, so head back to where the uh, at the back of the diner and all the way through. To where the yellow wire is, uh, back to the underground laboratory. Only this time, instead of going to the back of this lab, we're going to go straight up the first set of stairs that we come across here and get ourselves into the control room. Again, we're going to ha we're only going to be able to look around at things. First things first, have a look at the desk right in front of us for these uh, what kind of look like electronic chips and then press the A button on the device next to it. Turn around, grab the next uh, chip device or whatever you want to call it and then put it in the device again as we turn around. Again, you can only put things in once the marker turns green. And then with the three buttons in front of us, from left to right is one to four. So press one, three, and then four. And that's Jordan. Okay, once we're done here then, we'll take a right. We'll jump down and then we can get through the big... Uh, what kind of looks like a bank safe or something. Ooh, very interesting. All right, so first of all, take a look on the left, and that will get our notebook and something in our inventory going. It's another key that we can grab. Uh, I won't always be checking the... So we've just done all that work to open that just to grab a key. That that seems pretty... Um... Oh, it's a lot of work for no reward right there, Red. So again, head back up the ladder, only this time we're not going... Into the city, we're going to be moving away from the city. And into the crater she goes. And then you're going to interact with the generator. Again, press the X button next to it. Or the square button, I suppose. It'll be on the old Plaguen station. And once we're underground, we are then good to go for another scene.
Hooray! So finally on to the new level, the biologist level. Again, this is just for the most part, um, obviously just walking and following along. Excuse me. I thought I saw you there for a minute. No, now I've lost you again. Look, I don't know if you can see or hear me, but I'm going to scout up ahead. See if there's a way out of these caves. You're going to come across an elevator in a minute or so. There's a generator nearby you can use to power it up. So after we've done these uh, cheeky little bit of platforming sections, we're going to get what they call is an energy source, but it generally looks more just like a giant giant alien bugger. So we just walk past. It's going to be on the floor, kind of uh, hard to see. There it is. But yeah, that's uh, supposed to be an energy source that generally just looks like a giant alien bugger. So that's what we're going to refer it to as throughout the rest of the game. So carry your uh, your gab we'll call it, giant alien bugger, around to the left-hand side here, and that's going to go through this pole hole. And then what you're going to see, if we go to the right slightly, is this little thing's popped up. So what you do, next to it, you press the Y button, and you would have to put a certain picture in as we collect them through. And then what you'll need to do is press a certain button, and then to move the light, you'll just need to interact with the picture thing. So press the very first button, then use it to move the light to the left. So you have to press the button first and then use the green light. Once the uh, gab, again, giant alien bugger, has started shaking, then we're going to press the third button and then we'll use the light and that will shrink it down and, that, and then we'll be able to pick the gab back up and be on our way straight forward again. Because, whoa, that's mad. The big old bugger bags has given us some stairs, which I bet that's a bit sticky. There. So after this, we'll get our next achievement, the Lake House. So what we're still on the moon, but I tell you what, isn't this just the ideal picturesque everything for everyone? No people about, literally in the countryside, absolutely nothing. Like this is, this is a banger until, you know, you start seeing all the horror films and stuff come to life and monsters attack you in the night and then you die. That's uh, pretty much probably the only bad side to it. But anyway, what we'll do is continue... Uh, sort of forward, uh, heading through the tree, through the path, until you see this little shed in the woods. Um, we will just picked something up for our inventory. Hopefully that wasn't a toilet. I don't want to be picking up nobody's uh, poop-stained toilet tissue. Uh, but head back to the cabin in the woods, or the cabin in the middle of the woods, and then we can get inside. We do need to just nip around to the opposite side. There we go, so more or less the back. And that'll do. Okay, this is another one where we just have to interact with a few things. So the first table on the left, and then you're going to see a bit of a torn up picture. 
So we'll pick that one up. Uh, press B to put it in your inventory. Have a look at the sink directly in front of us. There's going to be a, another torn up picture. And then just to the right, there's going to be a desk over to the right hand side yonder. There's going to be, first of all, there's going to be the third picture, which if you take a look in your inventory, will just be a cat. And then what you'll need to do then is move some of the objects. Um, I say objects, they, they kind of like, uh, so we need to put the picture of the cat in to the, what looks like a magnifying glass first. And then you just have to move some of these objects around so that it just forms one big line. And then the cat will come to life. Like magic. Found a torn piece of Molly's photo today. I can't find the other pieces. How cruel to tear up a photo of someone's cat. It's the petty act of an insecure bully. But I'm more worried about his recent violent outbursts. Okay, so once we are outside, what we'll do then, um, we are going to get, we are going to find that cat in just a bit, but we're going to head down and there's going to be another bit of a cutscene. Not be here. Yeah, all right, bruh. I think, she, bruh, I think she's a superhero, right, bruh? Anyway, we're going to go to more of the left side of the woods. We're going to find the little kitty cat, and you should be able to see it now, sort of directly in front of us, just on top of this tree trunk, tree stump, whatever it is, right here. There it is. So you don't have to do anything. Just make sure to look at it in order to get the feline friend achievement. And now for this next part, what we're going to do, you can see the light. Just above, all we're going to be doing then is following that light. Uh, it's fit. Effectively, it's easy enough. It tries to get away from us, but it's still easy enough to spot and follow. I bet you're wondering where we are. Think about an artist making a painting. First, she sees it in her mind, right? So, what if there was a system that could take something from the mind of the artist and create the painting on its own? So after yet another strange encounter, uh, basically continue heading sort of forward and then, uh, but again, sort of sticking with the left hand rocks um, as much as you can, just so you know where you are. You can see the flickering sunbag light directly in front of us again, but what you're going to find now is uh, there's like a, kind of looks like a little bit of green or something. Uh, if, well, it's, I went a little bit too far. There we go. So it's that little green whatever it is popping out of the ground once you interact with that then you will be able to see some more stairs popping out and around so we're going to continue heading forward and then BAM well not BAM because there's going to be more stairs and stuff that we are going to uh, just counteract with and sort out so we've gotten to this point now we need to head back on ourselves.
So once you found the ultimate light source there, we're going to climb up. We can't pick that up yet, um, but we are going to be doing a bit of a platforming section. So drop down and then continue forward, jumping onto the rocks. Uh, rocks. Give yourself a good bit of uh, momentum. So give yourself a good run and jump. And there it is, yet another gab, just chilling in the open. So now we're going to drop down and head back up those same stairs and put it in the energy portal. Right, so once you've interacted with the generator at the uh, back end of this bridge, what you're going to do then is now interact with that line. You see that line that's just appeared? So we're going to interact with that um, basically until a whole bunch of lines get through, and then we can go and, uh, well, let's break through the wall, homies. So you just need to hold on to it until, yeah, that happens. Right, so on to the next level now, the physicist. So, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, it's not looking as pretty as the lake house once was. But again, there is a little bit of walking. A little bit of a lot of walking. As you pretty much would expect on the moon. So, you know, do that thing. Don't spend on that thing, just walk that thing. Okay. 
Okay, so once we've got here then, we've basically now got some jet fuel to burn, which we will do right now. So what we're going to do is head across the canyon now. Uh, we're going to need to do this anyway for an achievement, so uh, just using the jetpack to get across. But don't think that you've got an unlimited supply or anything, so basically you, you kind of need to feather your, your thumb over it. So a little burst, burst, burst. Uh, I think basically after three bursts, it sort of levels out, and if you're not high enough to get onto the rocks, you just have to try again. You'll you'll see exactly what I mean now, but basically, if you just hold your um, thumb on the A button in order to uh, jetpack yourself up, you won't be able to. Like I said, you have to do it in very, very short bursts. Long 271. Our ability to control the organism is truly remarkable and only limited now to our imagination. This has presented some rather remarkable results for most of us. However, for one individual in our group, the physiological response... You're getting closer. We can feel it. We... Fear of fear of everything. Well, I hate to share more bad news, but now I'm hearing voices. Was that the scientist? How is she talking to us? Right, so before cracking on then with portly gab stuff, we're just going to continue heading all the way to the back of this area, and then we're going to be finding a disturbing artifact. Uh, that's what it says, um, just behind these rocks right in front of us now, but that is what is going to get us the Investigator achievement. There it is. Kind of looks like some flippers and a snake or something, but uh, anyway, that's the Investigator achievement done. Then we can just crack on doing all the portly stuff. So this time we're going to have to open up our inventory and then we need to pick a specific picture. This time it's the one at the end, the fourth one in, what kind of looks like um, the beast. Not Mr. Beast, but just regular old the beast or whatever that is. And again, just like we've already done then, what you need to do now is press the A button on the actual picture itself and that'll get the green light going. And then again, you just have to uh, click on one of the buttons. For us, it's going to be the third button. And then if you click on the green light, that will get it going over to the right. Sorry, there's a bit of an edit skip there. And then if you click the fourth button, um, that is the one that will start... Oh, sorry, the fourth button will get it going to the right. And then once it starts shaking, then press the third button. Sorry, I've got my buttons mixed up. Um, and once it starts going... Whatever that noise is, then we can click the third button and that will shrink it, shrinky dink it down to size.
We've made a path for you. Please, hurry. We remember the stories. We remember everything. <laughs> Sorry, I had to get a drink. All this walking is knackering me out while I'm sitting down and recording. But anyway, uh, so after what seems like an eternity of a walk, you're going to see that fast forward button, but we're going to go to the right of it this time. So hit that fast forward button, go to the right of it, and then we are going to um, find the old giant squid bag, the old squidward. Uh, which will get us the eight legs achievement. So that one is done. And then once we're done, head back and then continue on to the right. So this bit's uh, a little bit weird, um, so effectively what you have to do, what you can see now is like that big switch or whatever it is right in the middle of the ground, it's going to spawn these like, they kind of look like leeches or something, leeches trying to suck you, suck your blood off, but not in a good way. Um, now they do chase you, so obviously you do just have to be careful, but what we need to do is kind of, you can see the green light just over there to our left on the screen. So we need to get them going around this little maze section into that green area. But what makes it sort of weird and annoying, they're stupid. So as you're gonna be able to see, I'm gonna turn the corner and then what they're gonna do is get stuck in the corner and they're just going to be, yeah, they're gonna be pretty, that's the, you're so stupid leeches. So what you need to do is kind of get them all the way over to the left and then all the way around. So kind of needing to do it the longest way that you possibly can around. Uh, so it may take just a few minutes just to get the stupid leeches following your ace. 
Um, if they do, uh, if they do uh, catch you or whatever, just make sure to jump up onto the uh, side ledges here. Um, it, it sort of makes the uh, screen go a bit disorientated and a bit fuzzy. But if that's the case, as you're going to be able to see in just a minute, just head back onto the ledge just to, you know, not die and stuff. You've come. We never expected a visitor. Do you have any idea of the danger of this place? Do you even know the power here? You see a barren wasteland. I see the ocean resort where I holidayed as a child. I think and it becomes real. Ah, then time to get another cheeky achievement while we're here as well. Uh, music's blaring, but all we gotta do then is just walk forward, head underwater until we get the underwater explorer achievement popping. And again, once we've climbed the ladder here, we are going to be up on to inside. <clears throat> so, first things first, what we're going to do is look at the locker directly in front of us. We're going to pick up another photonograph. There it is. Nice looking pier, sea pier side. Uh, turn around, have a look at the bench, and then, again, what you're going to do is put the, the one picture in the magnifying glass and then move some of the um, other magnifying glasses in order to get one big boom. So there's the lighthouse there in the one, and then move some of the things.
cautious in the Foglands. I can't help you there. Find the engineer, and for all our sakes, I hope you survive. Okay, so new day, new level, new achievement to grab. Uh, so we're just going to uh, stick with the right-hand side rock here, and then eventually there's going to be a right that we can turn into. That is going to... Um, uh, then we'll be able to find some ancient remains to get the relic achievement.
So that was another bit of fun platforming, wasn't it? So anyway, uh, oh, heading to the bar, 24-7, tidy. Anyway, we will get the creative power achievement after that one. Now, uh, this one took me the longest time to figure out, but all, like I said, all you have to do, you literally just have to do it in literally not even a second burst. So just bop, 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 get in up, and then when you think that you're high enough, then you can hold the A button and nip over to the other side. But that one, yeah, that tiny bit there did take a while for me to figure out, in all fairness. He knows my weakness. He abuses my disability for mere spite. But what he calls weakness, he will soon discover is my strength. My body may be imperfect, but my mind more than makes up for it. For now, I play the part of a chasing victim. So he won't expect my counterattack when it comes. city out of reach. He thinks he's the only one who can control the phenomenon. But I discovered a few things of my own. He may have made the buildings fly, but I discovered how to fly myself. Meet me at the construction site, and I'll show you my work. I'll show you how we can stop him. So these parts may seem difficult, trifficult, but uh, there's nothing too trifficult about them at all. Uh, but we are going to be getting another miscellaneous achievement here. So we're going to nip onto this ramp. And then again, you're just going to very gently, very calmly make your way over to the other side. Basically just keep climbing. What we're going to do when we get to this roof, you can see like the ladder directly in front of us, which seems to be going into the stairway of nowhere. Where are you? So we're just going to head towards that ladder, and to get the Leap of Faith achievement, you're just literally going to climb that ladder all the way to the top, and then it's job done. And then we could just carry on doing what we're doing, going from building to building.
my greatest achievement. I believe with this device, we can cure the diseased one. secret was to split the ring. Extraordinary changes take place. I don't have the time to explain right now. We, we need the others.
So another cheeky light and uh, puzzle element coming up here. So first we're going to get this achievement there uh, called the woods for exploring above the forest floor. Now you can obviously see we're on a bridge of some kind and then when we get to the next massive stump rock directly in front of us there will be a green light and then to the two of us there will be some switches. So if you walk into the green light it turns itself off like so and then if you interact with uh, either one of the switches it will um, get another path going for us. So the path that I just chose was the way that we just came. So we need to uh, basically just interact with the other switch. So if we can walk into the green light and then walk the other switch, that's where we need to go. So again, uh, once we head to the end of here, we're going to do it one more time and head up the new path. Okay, I think you got it under control. There's, uh, there's another truck up ahead if you run into more fire. I'm working on a blaze up here too. Making progress, but I'm not sure it's contained. So I've got to get back to work. Hey, look, you see my house still standing on the ridge? And I guess we've succeeded. sweat all the liquid out of my body. Everything is hot, dry, like bones of a carcass left out in the desert. When the sun goes down, I just keep hoping that this will be the night I get to feel cold. Just one moment. Right, so another achievement popping up here, the icy beast this is for uncovering cold bones in a hot land. So you just need to follow the uh, rocks all the way around to the left. And there it is. That looks pretty, damn it, gigantic. And then once again, just continue on E. We. Whatever he wanted. Guess he got bored. He finally just left it all to crumble. Thank <laughs> you. 
superstitious people. My dad told creepy stories about aliens, about creatures in the woods. And my mom, she was sure the stars were angels. Heavenly hosts, she called them. Anyway, I remember as a kid I would look out at the universe, the stars at night, just the sense of awe and wonder was so immense. I stopped believing in the supernatural a long time ago, but the awe and wonder is still there. If anything, it's greater. Stories just trivialize the enormity of it all. There's no story for this. My God, no words at all. Sorry, buddy. I guess I'm just rambling here since we're close to the end. This is the end, right? I think the planet's getting closer every minute. Won't be too much longer until we hit the atmosphere. And, well, I've got another problem now. Only about 30 seconds of oxygen remaining. I'm going to turn off my comms so you don't have to hear me check out. Godspeed, my friend.
There's some energy rocks over here. Killing will not provide the cure. We believe we could create as well, but in truth, nothing new is ever created, nor does anything ever truly die. Matter merely changes form. Even in death, our bodies return to the universe. And so too, our minds, and all our memories, ripple through memories and minds of others. And so, all is one. Do not be afraid. There is no more threat. No more disease. From your perspective, our bodies are frozen in place, but in reality, we are everywhere. In the ground beneath your feet, in the air. We are connected with the entire planet. And it is so much more than that. When you activated the portal, we launched across the universe in a nanosecond. As I speak, we are exploring star systems you cannot fathom. Worlds, 
you would not survive. Phenomena you couldn't possibly understand. Right, so we are almost to the very, very end of the game now. So what we're going to do is head up these steps on the right. Um, you could just go ahead. Basically, there's like a ring of letters, which you will see. You can press the X button to interact with anyone. Um, by just, you can literally just... Um, so there's two buttons to interact with, one for the top layer and one for the bottom layer. If you wanted to, you can just go ahead and press the X button on either one of them. Walk into the building straight in front of us, and that will get you the memorial achievement. And now we are simply going to end the game, so go ahead, go all the way back down, interacting with another portal ring, and that will effectively end the game. So, I will actually just leave it here now, guys and gals, so thank you so, so much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed the game and that the guide helped as well. If it did, of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend as well. Big shout out, as always, to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members, so thank you so, so much again. I'll see you in the next one, guys and gals. Big love. The organism. We have unlocked its power to transform, to reorganize itself into limitless forms. Now, this power is yours. I've reprogrammed the portal to return you to Earth's From there, you can make your way home. We are too much changed to ever go back. You may stay here as long as you like, but when you are ready, step through the portal. Houston, are you reading us over? I don't know what happened to the tunnel. Y'all see us all the way down here? Uh, we're just seeing you now.